Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Tyler, and I am going to be doing a PSA 103 card old modern, not ultra modern, reveal. <laughs> this is a order that I'm not only going to just do the reveal similar to my last video, I'm going to give you the financial breakdown. How did I do on this order now that everything is sold? So again, this is a 103 card order that was actually submitted Christmas of 2020. Of course, that was in the backlog uh, for PSA. It took a year to get it back. I got it back around Christmas of 2021. And here we are two months later. Every card has been sold through consignment and we are going to look at not only the cards but also was this worth the wait and did I make any money on this you all saw the last video with SGC that didn't really turn out that great but again it's SGC this is PSA we're talking about the red white and blue yeah let's go so we expect bigger things from PSA because it is the brand in sports cards. It is the brand that I've been loyal to and I am so excited to share with you guys. Finally, one of my last remaining bulk orders. I do have a couple more and we're gonna be going through those as well, but this is one that I wanna show you guys, the finances as well as the cards. So let's get right into it. We got more Russell Wilson. So yeah, this is the uh, crippled order. So um, this is, that order. Uh, unfortunately, everybody here has just not been that healthy. So let's jump right into it. Still gonna be a good order to go through. Let's go this side to this side. All right, Kawhi Leonard, PSA 10. The bad news is, is I got some pretty good grades in this order. This is actually a, a pretty decent order. So um, PSA's grading cards, to, from what I can tell, uh, at pretty good standards, standards that I'm used to seeing. No no real red flags. I have seen some orders coming through some from some other folks who are just getting hammered, especially ultra modern. This old modern order seemed to do pretty good. <clears throat> Panini Brilliance, PSA 10, Kawhi. Lots of 10s, uh, lots of really nice 10s. Uh, Brilliance 9, Kawhi Leonard Rookie. Crazy to see the market change on these cards. I mean, I remember selling these cards in the high 100s, low 200s. Uh, now you're lucky to break $100 on these things. I mean, we've come full circle, uh, which is great to see. I'm, I'm so, in a way, happy to see that you know a lot of this easy money is kind of gone. Um, it's back to easier money if the fees were what you would pay for this order. Uh, I think the bad thing is, is a lot of people are going to be sending in anything and everything at cheap fees, and um, it's really going to change the grading landscape moving forward. I mean, we're already seeing that with, again, cards that people are submitting at the $100 service level that have no business being submitted at $100. I mean, I, I've seen lists of like Shaq, Topps Chrome rookies, just regular Topps Chrome, or not rookies, Topps Chrome um, uh, parallels, not even numbered parallels, or maybe even a, a, a mild numbered parallel. And people are sell are, are are submitting these in a hundred dollar regular service. And it's just it's just crazy seeing what people are willing to pay for a hundred dollars. To me, it makes no sense. For every dollar that I spend with PSA, I expect to get at least four to five times that much value back in terms of the profitability. Meaning, if I spend you know two thousand dollars with PSA on an order, I want them to give me you know eight to ten thousand dollars in profitability of that order. It's a different way of looking at it. Um, it's not just ROI calculations. It's looking at how much value does PSA create for me. So if they take in you know a hundred million dollars in fees, how much value are they providing for the marketplace? So should they only provide a hundred million dollars in value collectively, or should they provide? you know, two, three, four, five times that. Well, what we're seeing is, is that collectors now are okay with getting less than a dollar back for every dollar that they give to PSA. Um, I'm eventually going to share a video and a poll that I did with collectors and also the dialogue that people are having just about that very topic. Jamal Murray, man, I forgot Jamal Murray's in here too. And I have so many good cards of his, like, this is the crippled order. Sorry, guys. That's just what we're going to call this. And it sucks. I mean, this is the premier level silver. Premier level sil uh, silver 10. You know, Jokic is absolutely killing it right now. If they had Jamal Murray back, they'd be in, you know, the top of the West discussions potentially. Two of these premieres came back PSA 10s. You know, I bought these after the bubble run because Jamal Murray looked awesome. Of course, <clears throat> uh, you know, he got injured. So uh, Mike Trout, 2012 mini PSA 10. These cards used to be closely, closer to around $200 a piece. You know, now we're lucky to get $100 back on that. 
Tom Brady, not injured, obviously, still throwing the ball, throwing that pigskin around fine. Orange, number 199. I was a little disappointed that n neither one of these optics came back 10. So I will say the big cards in these orders have not hit. And that's lately kind of been the case. Like the big cards are not hitting. The low end base cards that I can still, you know, move, those are hitting fine, but the big cards are not. Um, these are very difficult cards to grade. These, this Bowman Sterling uh, year was like a mirror. Um, and that, that was very, very prone to scratching. So hard to get these cards to grade. So uh, Russell Wilson's came back nines. <clears throat> His market has really taken a dump lately as well, just because he's been hurt. The Seahawks are way, way, way out of the playoff race. They're not not really going to be coming back and making any type of move. So, um, all right. So that is the first batch. Now we're going to be going on over to our next batch. So again, speaking of Russell Wilson, um, this was a Bowman Sterling blue refractor patch. You can see it's two color patch. Beautiful, beautiful card. Really cool. Um, thought it might've had an outside chance at getting Jim Mint. Does not get Jim Mint. Comes back as a nine. Finest, again, that mirror -y, like chrome -er look. It's very, very difficult to gem that year. Um, that one came back a nine. Score gold zone. Nine, but I did get another 10. These are very difficult to come by in terms of 10s. I think I've graded maybe three or four of these now as 10s. So the gold zone version coming back 10. Uh, Russell Wilson Platinum X Fractor came back a nine. Orange Refractor coming back a nine. These are not serial numbered. Um, <clears throat> then even had some SP Authentics. Man, I remember selling these above 120, 130 a piece for the 10s. The nines. You know, or you hope to break even, you know, during the rise in 2020, you could definitely make some money even on the nines, but that's probably not, that's definitely not the case moving forward, especially with the fees, where they're going to be, and also how many people are going to be submitting in cards. So, um, yep, did get, uh, I think two tens, but yeah, I got really, 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 really destroyed, uh, on the nines, um, which to me is not all that fair. I don't think I've graded a million of these. I think these cards look pretty good. Um, 10 there and uh, another 10. I actually think I have some Giannis in here too. And the, the Giannis ones, I think, also got the same treatment. There's nines and tens sprinkled in, but way more nines than there were tens. This is a big card. St uh, Tops Prime Russell Wilson stands on back copper, number to 350, PSA 10. So this is the copper version of this number to 350. And this card does not deserve to be a PSA 10. I mean, look at the corner. Look at that corner. Uh, it's not, you know, there you go. You see that? That right there. Yeah, they made a mistake on that. They definitely should not have given that card a PSA 10. And it moves. It moves. It's like an SGC holder. <laughs> card fits like an SGC card. All right. Yeah, that one does not need to be a PSA 10. Um, yeah, it's snug. This uh, magic card uh, is pretty nice. It's PSA 10. And we got some mini magic PSA 10. Yeah, whenever I saw that copper pop, I was like, all right, I'll take that. I don't know if it's really a big card. It is serial numbered, which to me is the way to go moving forward. Um, serial numbered is the absolute move, but there is fierce, fierce, fierce competition for numbered cards. We are seeing the total and utter collapse of the base card movement, which is amazing. These people who are talking about liquidity, they want liquid cards, cards that have comps, you buffoons, you go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and get the things that are rare, that never show up. Yeah, you don't have comps, and there's a possibility that you can overpay because you don't know what you're doing. That is a de big you know, potential flaw, but I definitely want something that's rare any day over something that's not rare. That's just me. Um, I don't want non-rare stuff. If you're collecting, collect whatever you want, but definitely don't overpay for something that is overly abundant, as we all have been doing over the past two to three years. You know, buying cards at artificially inflated prices that are raw, getting them graded, uh, and selling them at even higher prices. You know, I think that that has come to an end outside of very, very rare, high-end, exclusive things autographs, numbered, um, basically the rookies. Uh, you know, Sticking with rookies is never a bad idea, obviously. Um, stick, going kabooms and, and all this stuff, I'm not, I'm not really big on that. They're going to continue to make kabooms forever. LeBron's probably going to have 40 years worth of kabooms by the time it's said and all. Well, not really. Panini's going away. I guess if they got bought out by uh, the new company, potentially. But there's just way too many inserts out there, um, case sets, etc. Stick with the rookies. Stick with the early on-card autographs. Uh, you'll never fail, um, especially if you're getting in super early. Like Giannis right now, great time to get his on-card autographs. I actually bought two on-card autographs 
uh, recently from the same seller. So um really think that autographs are the way to go. They're going to print these things into oblivion. <clears throat> Uh, they can always print cards, but they can't make the player sign a million cards. They can make them sign several thousand cards, but um, they can only sign so many autographs out there. Um, that's that's kind of my take. So early on card autographs, rookie on card autographs, if you can get it, way to go. That is the way to go in today's highly competitive marketplace. Now, if you're a young collector, I get it. It's going to be very, very difficult to, to do that um, because... You know, a lot of big time investors are obviously pouring a lot of money into the hobby and it's made it very unobtainable for uh, the younger collector, which is, it is a shame, but that is the reality of today's marketplace. So with that, I understand that you might want to gravitate towards some base, um, but uh, just be careful out there, especially in today's age. <clears throat> Do not overpay. Do not fall for a Mac Jones two to three thousand dollar PSA 10 even though I like Mac Jones you've seen I've done I've, I've done some high-end orders with Mac Jones but they were numbered cards they were not base Donruss cards that you're going to find in a five dollar bin or you should find in a five dollar bin you know those are the types of cards that you had a 97 98 tops Tim Duncan rookie that you would find for a dollar or a 96 97 Kobe rookie that you would find for two or three dollars for years even after they've won five championships apiece those are the cards that should not be valuable we're talking about 2018 tops uh update US 300 Juan Sotos or the Ronald Acuña Juniors these cards are not cards that you should speculate on you can see there's over 10,000 and approaching 20,000 different PSA 10s of these cards. I mean, these are population monsters that everybody and anybody can have because they're so widely available. Um, there's no point in speculating on these types of cards. Um, so I hope that people learned, really learned their lesson. I really, really do. Um, I was glad to have benefited from this hobby explosion over the past you know, 12, 18 months. But at the same time, uh, 2021 has been probably my worst year from an ROI perspective. It's positive ROI, but it's really not that great considering the amount of money that's been poured into it. And um, we'll talk about that on a different day. But um, yeah, 2021 was a correction year for the hobby. Uh, and it was very, very, very difficult to get mediocre results just because the market corrected very, very, very quickly. And having to pivot and send cards to uh, new companies or companies without the following of a PSA, like a CSG and an SGC, uh, really, whoops. And now we got Porzingis, who also is not doing well, so I dropped the eight. Um, sending cards to those companies was an automatic loser. So you know, having PSA shut down in, in early April, late March, or I guess it was end of April, whenever it was, um, that cost me so much money because the projected resale value of the card in a PSA holder was immediately cut to a fraction of what it was going to end up selling in an SGC and CSG holder. And that cost me so, 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 so much. I was able to move all of that inventory. Um, in some cases, the cards I was able to send to PSA were very profitable. The ones that I weren't, wasn't able to sell or send to PSA basically wiped out all the profit that I had sent for those big orders going to PSA. And now I'm kind of making up ground in the back half of the year with, you know, express orders going to PSA that have been very, very well, um, where you're, you have much more predictable rates of return in terms of you get the cards back really quick. You know what the cards are going to be worth. Cards don't just plummet overnight. They go up and they go down. Um, but they're not going to necessarily crash on you in a two to three week period. So, you know, in a year's time frame, having cards stuck, you know, in CSG's hands for a while and SGC's hands for a while, uh, you can definitely see the market not doing so hot. This is a really cool card that I'm surprised I was still able to get a Jim Mint uh, 10 on. These hoops cards are incredibly difficult to find. Um, in good condition because those black borders and surprisingly these tins are not doing that well and it's just I got two of them it's just because it's a hoops card there's a million of these cards out there now sure they're not taken care of all that well but still uh, you know it's a card that you would want to think that uh, should uh, be great well it should not be gradable at this point this is a card I'm surprised it got an eight on you can see how dinged up that edge is 
like really, really bad. It's pretty much the biggest flaw here. I remember getting this card in hand. It is a Russell Wilson contenders rookie numbered to 50. No, it's not like a big rookie or anything. It's an insert rookie number to 50. Um, but it's just really, really, really beat up. Um, all these LeBron cards that I'm showing you were freebies for a big purchase that I did. Uh, with all those, if you remember my videos, I had Steph Curry rookies, Kevin Durant tops rookies, that whole order. The seller uh, of that that bulk order threw in all of these LeBrons. Um, and yeah, they're beat up rookies or whatever. But I got the second year Ultra that came back. And this is, you know, this is a card that's probably going to sell for over 200 bucks. So this freebie actually was a pretty nice freebie and it's probably one of the last freebies I ever get. I get so many freebies on big purchases that I get that actually grade out well. You know, I've had SP authentic cards that have graded out well for Kawhi rookies that have, you know, sold for over $150, $200 because it just perfectly hit the market whenever it was on its peak. Um, yeah, I haven't got a lot of freebies lately. There's not a lot of people giving out free cards because they, they know what the value is. Uh, this corner is dinged right here in this LeBron. I'm actually super, super happy that it came back an eight. Again, it was a freebie. So getting the card graded an eight or better for, for that is awesome. This is a card I'm a little disappointed in. I know it's off left or right. So that's probably why. And honestly, I think now that I see that, that's I probably should have expected that, but card is really really clean corners edges everything about it's beautiful this is a card that was selling in that 600 range um haven't seen comps in a while i mean maybe it's still there but we've got lebron we got uh carmelo we've got wade it used to be the lebron wade bosch card because it was the miami trio he's got a full slate of banana boats like he, he needs another banana boat to fill all of his all-star teammates and all-time greats i mean you know, what is it? Melo's a top 75 player of all time. Wade's a top 75 player of all time. Anthony Davis, top 75 player of all time. I can't remember if Bosch made the list or not, but he was one of the best power forwards at the time. Kevin Love was best por one of the forwards of, of, of the time. Um, Kyrie Irving, yes, he's crazy. He's a psychopath. He has a, no idea what he's doing. He makes racist comments and um, yada, yada, yada. But he's still a really, really good player. I mean, LeBron has a full slate of banana boat bros. He tried to squeeze in Chris Paul. He fit him on the banana boat, but he did not fit him in L.A. Um, I'm sure that's probably going to happen at some point because all banana boat bros get fed whenever it comes to LeBron so it can stroke his ego and also maximize his, uh, you know, his just persona and his, his aura of being LeBron. But you, you can tell I'm not a big fan. But this card is going to be sold. It's probably about a five dollars $600 card. Really, really happy that LeBron keeps making me a little bit of money even though I despise him. Um, so, yeah, there's that. LeBron James, uh, Bazooka rookie. No, second year. Sorry. This is the second year uh, card that came back a nine. I don't know if it has a fitted sleeve or not, if it moves around. Um, it's not perfectly centered in the holder, but it's it's good enough. And it actually does move. Yeah, it moves. Okay. So I can move it perfectly square or I can mess it up even worse. So these inner sleeves try to do the best job they can, but these cards are very, very, very flimsy. So it's difficult to get them to perfectly situate. Uh, one of the Russell Wilsons that I did get was an orange refractor PSA 10. I know it's a little bit out of order, but it was at the back half of this order. So we're just going to go through these and, and put them on top. So um, black refractor also came back at 10. <clears throat> this was a really cool card. Speaking of banana boat bros, Anthony Davis rookie. This is a black Friday cracked ice autograph number 225. Uh, five i believe or no it's not numbered but i think it's rumored that there's you know are probably around 25 23 of these out there not many of these have been graded really really cool um love that card uh, next up, Anthony Davis, uh, Bowman Sterling, uh, centering looks good here. I've graded a bunch of these. They've come back PSA 10s and 9s. And man, oh man, I don't know what's up with that one. Oof, oof. Look at that, guys. Nothing on the corners. And the centering looks spot on. And these cards really don't have surface issues. They Because it's, Bowman Sterling never does um, outside of those, those Russell Wilson years. These cards were clean. You paid a premium for Bowman Sterling, and they actually made it with premium quality. That one's very surprising that it came back a nine. Um, I way, 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 way overpaid for this card. This is a Russell Wilson uh, Blue Refractor 2012 um, die cut card. Um, it's numbered to 50. Uh, came back a nine. I'm going to probably lose my shirt on that. But overall, the order is going to be positive. 
Um, there is one card that they would not grade, and this is a monster. Um, <laughs> this is a Reggie White autograph uh, century mark autographics. Uh, this is a, bu a buddy of mine sending some cards. Uh, it's his. I'm actually going to try and buy it. Uh, if I, I didn't know that these cards were that rare, but apparently it needs to go PSA DNA. Um, so this is going to be an expensive card. That card's going to go PSA DNA. What a monster. I actually got to show this on here. What a really, really, really cool card. This is super, super rare. I know a lot of people, are, and it's even inscribed 1 Corinthians um, 1 3. I don't know how, I don't know what this is down here at the bottom. Um, very, very, very cool. Unbelievable. I think it's a, yeah, I think it's a century mark. Uh, whatever it is, it's the one that's numbered to 100. Maybe it's just the regular one that's numbered to 100. Um, yeah, I, I actually want to see if I can buy this card. This is super rare. This is probably one of the rarest, most unique cards I've showed off on the channel, and it's not even mine. Um, this came from a, I believe it's a, a collection of someone who passed away who had an unbelievable collection. Um, high-end exquisite from the very first year of exquisite, including LeBron limited logos, Kobe limited logos, MJ limited. Uh, he didn't have the MJ limited logos, but he had the MJ RPA um everything man Th this collection was unbelievable and i think this card came from that um so michael jordan uh metal universe again that's also part of this guy's uh cards Kawhi leonard prism psa 10 i wish that was mine yes i sold some of these for over three thousand, and that one's pretty clean so it did well Carl Anthony Towns. Again, we're from Kentucky, so there's going to be some Towns rookies hanging out there. That one came back at nine. And one of the biggest head scratchers of them all is Derek Jeter that came back a five. And it probably means that there's a roll mark on it somewhere here. Um, I don't see it, but it's probably there. Yep, that's really confusing. But overall, really, really, really cool order, guys. Um, good cross section of cards. Gonna sell this order. It's gonna be profitable. All right, beautiful people. Here we go. We have the finances pulled up, and we're gonna do a deep dive into this, and we're gonna look and see how I did. So we saw all these cards. The last couple of cards, they were uh, one of my buddies that I submitted for. So obviously didn't sell those. Gave those uh, to him. But this is what we've got to look at. So how did I do on this order? Overall, pretty positive. Now, had I got this order back six months ago, probably would have done a lot better. But anytime I can make money, I'm going to make money and I'm going to be pretty happy about it. So all, all said, you know, considering this was an order full of injured players, as I stated in the video whenever I recorded the break, yeah, I think I did pretty well on this. So even looking at Kawhi Leonard, who's been hurt forever, I have no idea why where this came from, this 113.64. I promise you I did not pay that for a base card. More than likely what happened is I bought multiple cards and I just attributed the value of what I purchased to this one card. So if you see crazy prices like that, usually it's because I did pay a lot of money for it, but I promise 113.64 didn't pay that much for it. But as you can see, sold that whole lot. Kawhi is really not playing right now, and even though I got gym mint grades, still didn't really help. Same thing with this Panini Brilliance. I basically broke even, if not lost a little bit of money. Um, same thing with the 9. So uh, Panini 9 uh, lost a little bit. So Kawhi basically didn't really help me out. Like I made a little bit of money here and there. Surprisingly, Anthony Davis, I did make some money on. Um Again, the Lakers were a different team early uh, in 2021. Now they absolutely just suck, which makes me happy. I'm pretty happy that uh, the Lakers are not uh, on the top of the food chain. But So there is some Anthony Davis cards that I think I did pretty well on. If you look at Jamal Murray, man, I would have done so much better if Jamal Murray was back. I bought these basically in the bubble. You can see there's some bubble prices that I paid for these cards. And I'm glad they came back Jim Mint because if they didn't, I would have been screwed. So, you know, overall, I think I did pretty well on those. Mike Trout Mini, um, I would have thought that I did a little bit better on that. So it seems like a lot of the hobby money may be going to some of these other guys, but I would have thought this would have been a mid $200 sale. Uh, got 144 out of it, so obviously did, did very well. 
Tom Brady stuff. Tom Brady stuff is absolutely on fire. Now, whenever I sold this, playoffs were still going on, and Tom Brady hadn't announced retirement, and you know, lots of things were were still in the works. Um, so football and Brady necessarily wasn't necessarily at peak Brady level as as it is right now with people uh, going crazy after his items. But um, you know, having said that, I still did pretty well on these, even though they came back uh, as nines. Russell Wilson, yeah, I'm going to take a haircut on Russell Wilson, especially if it's going to come back a nine, because a lot of these were bought, again, you know, I sent this order off in 2020, so I bought these cards Q4 of 2020, really in in between November and December, so in between Thanksgiving and Christmas of 2020, that was my buying window for these cards, so all of these are prices that I paid for cards as the market was going up, and here we are, the market has crashed, and I'm still making money right? That's great. That's the beauty of PSA. And that's also the beauty of buying correctly so that you're not buying a bunch of junk. So even though these players are hurt, even though Clay Thompson has no legs, he has legs now, even though Russell Wilson had no, I don't even know what he got hurt with, shoulder, thumb, something, something with his hand. Even though Jamal Murray has no legs, even though Kawhi Leonard has no legs, even though LeBron is 37 and old, even though Porzinga sucks, even though all these guys are not any good, I still made money, which is fantastic. It's so beautiful. That's why cards are so beautiful. If you just know what you're doing, you're going to do okay. All right. So Russell Wilson's, I did okay on. Um, where was I? So Russell Wilson's, if I got a... Wow, that blue refractor actually made money on. It came back a nine. So the mini broke even. The mini 10 I made money on. Let's scroll back up here so that you guys can see. So the mini 10 I made money on. The regular magic I made money. I bought those because, again, those are easier grades. They're not as speculated as, say, his tops rookie, which everybody's trying to grade because everyone wants a tops rookie. You know, it's the card to buy. Uh, Russell Wilson Copper. This is the one that did not deserve a 10, and I got $290 out of it. So that is like a bonus that I didn't expect. Um, I'll take it. The But that kind of makes up for these because I, I've graded a ton of these SP Authentics, whether it be uh, Russell Wilson or the Giannis year. Like these, these cards are clean. You can tell if they're clean or not. I think I should have done better than that. Same thing, Clay Thompson, same thing. These are, you know, very clean cut cards. They're not Panini, Panini cards. So I don't think I did as well. The crazy thing is, is these PSA 10s were in the 120, 150 range. And obviously that's changed. Um, uh, the, the Platinum cards, again, took a, a terrible, terrible hit on the Platinum cards. Made a little bit of money on the Gold Zone. It's crazy. I sold, I've graded four of these Gold Zones. I think I've had three PSA 10s out of four so far. I want to say the previous PSA 10s were in near the 300 range, like 250, 300. So again, values crashing, crashing. But this is why I don't invest in sports cards. I buy cards to flip them after I grade to collectors, to people who do want to invest, but I'm not sitting on these cards. Like the cards that I sit on don't have massive value fluctuations like this. These are card, you know, I want to put my money in cards that, you know, are less resistant to price fluctuations. And if you look over 2020 and 2021, believe it or not, there are cards out there that have not dropped. Like say a 2003 Topps Chrome LeBron James rookie PSA 10 that was a $40,000 card that's now 10,000. Like the, that card has crashed, th what is that, 300%? The market hasn't crashed 300%. It's just the highly speculated cards that have dropped. And with like this Russell Wilson, okay, so it didn't drop at a rate that say a Topps Chrome LeBron James rookie drops at, but it's still, it's still dropped. And that's not where I want to put my money. It's not a player I want to put my money in. So that's just, that's just that. That's me explaining myself. Uh, Russell Wilson, way overpaid for these. And I also didn't realize that 2012 Finest sucks from a condition perspective. Those cards are not clean. That was getting to the point where Topps was, uh, that year specifically, just not good. Uh, for for finding gem mint cards. Clay Thompson, I did do very well with these. These SP Authentics, I did well. I, I cleaned in. I cleaned house. Crazy, this Upper Deck Special uh, Redemption LeBron James rookie. I broke even, lost money after fees. But this, this as a PSA 9, I want to say I could have doubled my money on. Had I, again, got that card three months earlier. What I love about grading these early Kobe cards is you can do so well with them. Like, it is unbelievable. A PSA 9 still made me money. 
And that is such a good feeling. Uh, and that's almost how all of 2020 was, especially if you're able to submit at these fees. Again, these were the fees before the big price hike. This is old modern. So this is either $12 a card or $15 a card, one of the two. I have it down at the bottom. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that. SPX, this is a very under the radar set. Yes, it's a base card. It is a older base card. So good luck finding good copies. I got four of them, bought all four. These are the two that I sent in. And again, it's just a low pop card. Not many people were grading base. Um, and now the ones that are available are the plentiful ones like tops that honestly you shouldn't grade even today or even in 2020. Um, but the SPX is actually a pretty clean card. It's a premium base card. So even in any, any era, whenever there's low uh, cheap PSA fees, this is a card that you should probably be able to grade. Uh, at any point, you should be able to grade this card. Even at a, a $20 price point, can buy this card for 866 i can get it graded you know if it comes back a nine today probably won't make money but if i got a psa 10 i would make money i would be fine with that Dak prescott uh red yellow this was around the time when Dak and cowboys fever was going crazy which makes no sense to me whatsoever they're playing the absolute worst division in football if not the worst one of the worst divisions and it's always about what, what the cowboys are doing yeah they can put up 50 points against a bunch of garbage teams like the eagles uh or, or the giants which I, they actually may have struggled with the giants one of, the, one of their games but i mean come on Come on, like what do they do against good competition? They had a horrible record against teams with a uh, winning percentage above 500 um, and outside their division. They just stad pat or pat, pad their stats against their division. So, you know, I'm not a believer in Dak long-term because of that. Like he's gonna be a regular season quarterback. He's gonna make a lot of, uh, you know, highlights against these bad teams, but come playoff time, they're not going to be there. They're going to be one and out, uh, maybe zero and out. So uh, every year I, I like to ride that wave of Dak, but then ultimately it's going to come crashing down. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I have about three or four Dak cards right now that I'm stuck with until next year's preseason hype. Giannis rookies, I'm uh, very, very, very disappointed with how these graded, but um, and also sales, I would say. Um, whenever these were these sold... Uh, I want to say that the prices that they were normally pulling were in the 250 300 range and all these values just kind of came crashing down it wasn't a good recipe for selling Giannis, and Giannis probably wasn't hot at the time again this is around uh christmas to early january basketball doesn't really start picking up until february march which is where we're at right now beginning of march you know all eyes are off football uh all eyes are definitely off baseball because there's no spring training it's a lockout so uh, now it's like basketball. This is this is what it is. So now would have been a good time to sell these, but again, want to flip cards. So uh, sold everything together. The FX version of this card uh, did sell for higher than the regular, which is expected. So it made a pretty good chunk on that. The Pinnacle, um, again, I did not pay zero money for this. I, I basically got that as a freebie for uh, buying all these. So actually, you know, made pretty good money on that by the time you do all the accounting. Prism Travis Kelsey 9, I'm surprised that card came back uh, and I got the return that it did. The Refractor 9 also did very well. Man, I, I love buying these old cards. They, I mean, they do so well and they're so resistant to price crashes because they're not speculated. Like, these are unspeculated uh, buy-in prices. Like, there's not a lot of people pumping these things up. Like, on social media, nobody's pumping up buying these cards, which I love. It's stable. You can buy these in an up market or a down market, and everything's fine. These, uh, da -da -da, let's see, what did I skip over? So, the Mike Trout, uh, love this card. I've graded this card consistently on this channel forever. You all have all seen that and I continue to do well on it. These cards have uh, essentially all dried up now. So that gravy train may actually be over. If you look at Topps Chrome, uh, LeBron James, uh, those were freebies. And so all these were freebies and they were not in good shape. <laughs> so you can see there's a Hummer LeBron James that came back a five. Uh, still worth grading. You know, if I got paid ten dollars to get graded, I'd rather sell it. Uh, you know, as a five than a raw card, and then you know have to deal with relist over and over and over. Um, the ultimate victory or the victory coming back at an eight was a surprise. This again, this is a freebie, and this second year ultra. So I bought these 
uh, as, as part of a group with these Giannis rookies, with some Steph Curry rookies. Uh, a long time ago, I've shown it on the channel. I paid $4,000 for the lot. Did very, Kevin Durant rookies were included in it, including some Topps rookies. So these were freebies for me buying everything, basically. And you can see out of these freebies, you know, I probably got about $350, $400 on a... <laughs> on a purchase, it was $4,000. So I got gave myself a 10% discount based on the freebies by grading the freebies, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought that was awesome. Uh, let's see. So we've got some Porzingis rookies. And again, I graded these whenever I thought that him and uh, Luca were at least going to make a little bit of noise. I don't think they're going to make a lot of noise, but at least make a little bit of noise. I mean, everybody's going crazy over hoops, rookies, etc. cetera. Eh, I didn't do so hot on these. I mean, I'm I probably made money or broke even, you know, worst case scenario. But again, that's the beauty of like grading these things so cheap. Joel Embiid, again, it would have been great to have Joel Embiid right now and sold these right now. But again, whenever these were sold a couple of months ago, Joel was not the talk of the town. Still, what's going on with Ben Simmons? You know, is he psycho? Is he having uh, difficulties because he can't deal with the pressure? Who knows what's going on there, but it, it definitely dragged Joel Embiid's uh, prices down. But lately, he's been playing out of his mind, and now he's got James Harden. So it would have been nice to have sold these now, but unfortunately, we, we don't have them anymore. And I probably uh, lost a little bit. Yeah, I probably lost a little bit, maybe broke even, um, uh, just looking at those. So Hoops, Kawhi Leonard rookies. Uh, again, maybe made a little bit of money on it and go to in and out and get me some two by twos with uh, some onions and protein style, please. Uh, Russell Wilson Black. This is a numbered parallel. Again, figured that was going to be, uh, no, was it numbered? No, it's not numbered. So did okay on that one, surprisingly. This is a good one. I'm glad that I got this. Um, so this is a PSA 9. Again, riding the wave of Carmelo, LeBron, Wade, like the, the banana boat crew. The only one we're missing is Chris Paul and, and some girl. So, uh, yeah, did really well on that. I was actually kind of thinking it had an outside chance at being a 10, but I'm pretty sure it may have been a little off center. Bazooka Comics. Uh, this is a second year Bazooka Comics, so it came back as uh, a 9 and I lost a little bit of money. The two PSA 10 Platinums that I did get for Russell Wilson, I think they made up for the losses. So th this black refractor actually kind of made up for everything, which is great. The black ice, I'm disappointed in this black ice Anthony Davis autograph, although I did make money on it. It's a very rare card. It was a low pop card. So somebody who was going after Anthony Davis did good. Uh, Kevin Durant, nine. Meh, whatever. Uh, let's see. Tops Chrome Red Zone, Russell Wilson, and I really lost a lot on that. I, I way overpaid for this card. It was a stupid purchase. I think it's a numbered rookie insert, but still, it, it was a probably the dumbest purchase of the entire set. There's one card here. Uh, one of my buddies that sent in, it was a, a, an autographics card. It actually needed PSA DNA. They wouldn't grade the card because the card needs PSA DNA with it being so old. So they didn't grade that. And then we also got some of these cards that uh, were graded. So what did I pay in fees for this? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's do this math really quick. Equals that divided by 103. Yep, so it's $12 a card plus, you know, by the time you factor in insurance, um, it's about 61 cents a card. Uh, so we're looking at about $12 and 61 cents card, which is not bad. Now, if we look at the actual profitability, drum roll, please. Me, 38.92%. Considering the market tanked and considering my gym 10 rate was 40, 41%. Yeah, it was 41%. Uh, and my mint nine rate was 56%. Now there's some, there's some other stuff calculated in here that I didn't really get into. Uh, I don't go all the way down. I just look at the tens and the nines. I mean, this is a blah order. I mean, we're talking 40% gym rate. We're talking a year weight. The market was going up and then it crashed. Uh, I consider this a, a pretty good success. Um, not what I wanted whenever I submitted the order way back in the you know last Christmas or two Christmases ago now. Um, still, we're looking at about $10,249 in sales after fees, looking at a profit of $2,871 after considering, again, the cost of goods sold, which is the cost of the cards, the cost of the grading, which is, you know, all that together, $7,378. Looking at, again, $2,871 profit, 
So this is me taking $6,000 and then adding some money to it. So really $7,378 investing it in the stock market for a year, not really doing anything with it and getting a 38.92% return. Now it's not that simple because I actively had to buy these cards, prep them, grade them, take on the risk of it getting lost in the mail and all that. Um, so at the end of the day, 38.92% is not what I like. It's way below my historical averages, but considering what happened in 2021, I'm, I'm okay with this. Um, this is something that uh, I'm okay with. If I can wash myself of late 2020, early 2021 purchases and come out ahead, I'll do that any day. And that's really what we're seeing with the PSA orders that I've gotten back that were submitted around this time. They're coming out ahead, some really ahead, and then some of them just minor, uh, minorly ahead like this. So uh, that's it. That's really all I got for you guys. This is a long video. Uh, if you skipped around, uh, no biggie. Um, glad you guys checked me out. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button, share this uh, again. I have a big, I had a big absent or absence, but I'm still doing the same thing that I'm always doing. And now I'm just getting settled into where I can start putting together all this content. And at least now I'm giving you a little bit more value in terms of what I'm making on the orders. Um, and soon we're going to be doing a breakdown of what I made in 2020, what I made in 2021. That video may be coming a little bit later because again, I still have cards that I bought in 2021 that uh, a lot of cards that I bought in 2021 that I've not graded and sold. So that's going to be a relatively incomplete analysis because, you know, we're just now wrapping the books and closing the books on 2020 um, in terms of cards that I've sold. So uh, 2021, maybe a couple months away, can at least give you a preliminary look to see what the projections are looking like. Um, but there's plenty of content that's coming this way. So Again, thanks for checking it out. I always keep it real here. The wins, the losses, overall, we are way, way, way ahead um, as long as we're not submitting to SGC and CSG. So uh, thanks for checking me out, and we will see you next time.